Welcome, everybody. It's the My Podcast World uh, Blab, where we talk about all things podcasting and how you can use podcasting to grow your business. I'm Scott Pat, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology, and joining me over on this side is Gordon So and our very special guest, Terry Fallis, below me. So, Gordon, why don't you tell us a little bit about Terry before uh, we get going? Absolutely, folks. You know, I've um, I've had the pleasure of um, knowing Terry for the last three or four years now. So. You can imagine as a, as a kid growing up in Hong Kong and then coming here to, to Canada years and years ago, right? I, I traded in my chopsticks for a hockey stick, right? For ball hockey when I was very, very young, if you can imagine. But I never really played um, hockey other than when I was very young. And I, I watched my son play ice hockey, but I didn't play myself. And the first year I played uh, in a league, Terry was actually the captain of my team. And I was just sharing with the folks earlier, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating because I've never really played uh, organized sports before, so they told me that, okay, Gord, you're on the right wing. I was like, okay, what's the difference between left and right? But he said, you're, whatever the wing I was on, they said, when you see Terry come off, that's the person you, you would um, take off. So Terry would come off, I would go on. But the problem was he's got an identical twin brother. So there was one time his twin brother came off and I went on by mistake and the referee blew his whistle. So I couldn't figure out first what was going on, but we had too many men on the ice. But or So Terry is just absolutely fabulous. He's um, not only is he, um, you know, uh, an author, writer, but he's also a family man and he, he just loves to help people. And, and, I, and I, I was talking to Terry and I said, Terry, we have a live podcast with folks from all across the country, North America. Last week we had someone in Australia. Terry, could you come on and maybe share with us your experience from, you know, from blogging to podcasting to writing a book and, and what that's meant for you? Well, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, I've never done a lab before, so this is kind of cool. It's a, a, a platform I haven't used before, so delighted to, Welcome. to learn about it. Thank you, Welcome. Scott. Um, well, I it goes back to 2000 and. and Six, really. I uh, I was a podcaster as early as we started in April 2006 with a podcast called Inside PR, which is a show about a weekly show about my day job in the public relations world. And uh, my co-host and I, we would uh, record on a Sunday night and we would do a weekly half hour show on our profession. And uh, it was on iTunes and on our blog. And we did that for I did it for two, for four and a half years without missing a week. So we we're up in the 250 wow. episodes. Good for you. Uh, and it was a, a great experience. It's how we learned about this emerging world of social media is we decided we would throw ourselves into it. And uh, that show still goes on strong now. Both my co-host and I have given up the mic, turned it over to colleagues uh, who still do it. But uh, it was pretty cool that our podcast became, you know, required listening to in, in, in PR courses and uh, university courses around the world. It was bizarre. Each week we would get all these students tuning in to listen to us because they were then quizzed on it in their uh, in their coursework and mm, you know nice. in the Czech Republic and in Australia. Wow. And, anyway, that we had a lot of fun. Amazing, doing it. That's the amazing thing about podcasting, right? Like you get this map and it shows you where all the downloads are. And it's exactly. just like how did somebody in Finland find me? Or how did right. somebody wow. in deepest darkest Africa listen or bogota colombia or all over the place it's amazing yeah it's quite something and and a high speed internet connection can connect you with people all over the world and it was shocking to me and and when i wrote my first novel just uh, as sort of a sideline as a bit of a passion uh i spent a year trying to find a publisher for it and I didn't even make a big enough impression on the traditional publishing establishment to generate an automated rejection letter. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd written well, a satirical novel of Canadian politics, which probably wasn't the right way to go if I really wanted to be published. But I decided I wasn't going to find a publisher and I, I headed down the path of self-publishing. But to build an audience for it, I decided to podcast the entire novel chapter by chapter. Oh, and good idea. give it away for free on iTunes and on my blog, uh, at terryfallis.com. And uh, that's what I did starting in January of 2007. And it was, it was an experiment. Uh, I didn't know if people would find it. Uh, I actually sent customized 
audio promos to all my other podcasting buddies and they dutifully played them on their shows. So I got an immediate kick. Terry, that is a great idea. And I've never heard anybody say that. Really? You got all these podcast friends. You do like a 15 to 20 second uh, blurb on your podcast, send it out to them and ask them to pop it into their podcast episodes. Well, and, and that's exactly what I did. And I, I customized each one. I said, hey, all you listeners of Scott, the Scott Sigler podcast in New York, uh, mm-hmm. I'm Terry Fallis, blah, blah, blah. And I would put little music in oh. from my show. And so I would really customize it to their audience. And then back then, and I'm assuming to this day, the podcasting community is very generous. And they played them on their shows. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I got an immediate uptick and of course you can track your podcast subscriptions minute yep. by minute which which i did mm. and uh, you know I, I got comments from people all over the world i don't really know how they found it maybe it was the audio promos but i have to say it was the positive comments i got from people who didn't know me uh, that mm. i considered to be the first bona fide impartial feedback I ever got on my manuscript. And I'm not sure I would have gone ahead with the self-publishing process if uh, I hadn't had those comments, but I did. And the book came out. And uh, so I thank my podcast listeners for that because I'm not sure it would have happened. And that really launched my literary life because that self-published novel miraculously won the Stephen Leacock Medal for Humor, which is in our country, which is the you know, one of the oldest literary awards we have. And I immediately landed a literary agent and Random House, the McClellan and Stewart imprint of Random House uh, mm. as my publisher. And I've been with them for, well, I just signed another two book deal. So I'm, I'll be up to seven novels when it, when it's finished. So wow. all because my podcast listeners said, uh, this is pretty good. You should, you should push forward with it. And, and I did. So podcasting was pretty central to my, uh, to, you know, to what modest success I have had, podcasting was right there at the beginning. That's nice. amazing. Terry, what's the name? What was the name of your first book? Uh, the first novel was called The Best Laid Plans, and uh, it, you know, it it was greeted with so much more uh, success than I ever anticipated. And you mentioned the TV, the six part TV miniseries, which was a lot of fun to be yes. involved with. Uh, it was a stage musical in Vancouver uh, and should be touring the country soon as a stage musical. Uh, so right. it's, this is the novel that keeps on giving, all because some podcast listeners in other parts of the world said uh, they liked the novel. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a quite wild ride, but podcasting has been a big part of it and social media in general. You know, one of the big things I always tell people about podcasting is, I mean, because you could say, My podcast has never earned me a penny because I've never got a check from iTunes or somebody. But the fact is, is that it really, like you said, it launched your literary career, which turned into a book that was self-published. It turned into a book that was published by a major publishing house, which turned into a play, which turned into a musical. And so it just, I mean, it just keeps rolling on. You've got derivative and derivative and derivative works on it. And the other thing that really struck me on what you said, Terry, was you you read the book chapter by chapter and you podcast the whole book. So, Mm. you know, the the other question people always ask me is, well, if I give away all of my information, then what are people going to buy or do or whatever? And you answered that like you gave your whole book away. Nobody Mm. needed to buy it. Nobody needed to read it. They could have listened to it. But that's not the way it works. The way it works is. Everybody listened to it. The people that listened to it said, Terry, you've got a great book here. You should publish it. We really like it. And could I was wondering about this part or I was wondering about that part. That's great feedback, right? And well, then I, you, go ahead. No, no, fin- finish your thoughts, Scott. <clears throat> yeah. So so all of a sudden you've got this you've got this book done that you wouldn't have had done before. You know already that there's a certain number of people in the world that are going to love it because you've, you've had that feedback, which is great because most people, when they put out a book, it's kind of like, hope it works, right? <laughs> but you've, you've already got this following that's saying, yeah, like, this is a really good stuff that you're going to be uh, going to be putting out. And so 
so you're able to kind of move forward. And of course, as you said, without the podcast laying the foundation, you wouldn't have been able to build the walls, build the roof and everything else of this house of publishing that you're doing now. Yeah, I think that's right. And uh, I often get that question is why would you give it away for free? It's, it's, it has some value. And, and I would never have given away the novel in written form, in manuscript form, in printed form for free. Uh, but uh, I'm a big believer in the notion of, of using the online uh, platforms that we have to give it away in a different version. And in my case, the audio version. And if people like it, uh, what I, I mean, I heard this over and over. Love that novel. I bought a copy for my sister for Christmas. I bought a copy mm. for my father for Christmas. And I wanted a copy for myself. And I'm convinced that we sold more books, more hard copies of the book because I gave the audio version away for free. That's amazing. Wow. And uh, I think it's uh, – and McClellan and Stewart, or Random House, my publisher, in their uh, enlightenment after some persuasion – uh, they've allowed me to continue podcasting. So if you go to iTunes and pump my name into the iTunes store search bar, you'll see there are now five novel podcasts in their entirety there. I've produced them all myself Amazing. in this very room, in fact. Wow. And they've wow. let me continue to do that. And they're not used to giving things away for free. So, uh, but uh, no, no. they were good. They so were you've good. turned this into your, you've turned this into your system, right? Yes. You write your book, you podcast the book, you publish the book, you sell the book. <laughs> that's right. That's brilliant. That's right. Oh. And that's the opposite of what every, I mean, I know like there's audio and there's audiobooks.com and there's all these places where you can get audio books. And of course, the way they work is they take the book that you've written, they turn it into an audio, and then they sell the audio as an upsell. Right. And, uh, and I think this is brilliant. Like you create your audience and sure, like, yeah, I like listening to it. But there's just something about, and, and I can see it's definitely the case for you, holding that physical paper book, you know, in your hands to feel it as you read it. Right. Oh, I think you're That's right. Uh, I think you're right. And it, it just was, it worked well for me. The one concession to commercial reality now that I have a traditional publisher is that they ask that I not finish the audio podcast until the book is on the shelves. So I start mm. it, I mean, if there are 20 chapters... I start it 16 weeks before the book is due to hit bookstores. And then I still have four chapters to go when it hits bookstores. So you can't sort of get the whole story before it's available at least. So that's nice. the only thing that they have asked uh, that I do. So uh, I'm pleased. And with that's that. reasonable. I mean, when you think about it, I've watched all of the, uh, I've listened to all of the chapters except the last four. The book is now out. I can't wait. I'm going to go buy the right. book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just for everybody that's with us live, we're going to be talking for probably five or six more minutes with Terry, and then we're going to be taking your questions. So there's been some couple really good questions, and we haven't, we're not ignoring you, but we, what we want to do is we want to get this information out to you first and then take your questions. And then if you have specific questions for Terry, uh, then we want to we want to deal with them first as well. Sure, that's great. <clears throat> Amazing, Terry. You won uh, the Stephen Leacock. Or Stephen is it Stephen Leacock? Yep. It's, what is the award? Stephen, Stephen Leacock yeah. Medal for Humor. For humor, twice now, right? Twice and uh, twice? Uh, miraculously twice? nominated. Another well, I've, each of my novels has been a finalist for it, and my late my current novel was just it was just announced on Friday that it's one of the three finalists for this year's Leacock Medal. So uh, I'll find out in June whether that's happened. I mean, I'm not expecting it to happen. I, I always protect myself from expecting anything. Uh, but it's an honor to be uh, to be in that uh, amongst those other writers. So it's great. That's it's amazing. Well, pulls apart. I, uh, my daughter's not here, so I can talk about it. But I know, understand she's listening to podcasts nowadays. So I got to be careful what I'm saying. But um, I sent her to uh, get a Mother's Day present for, you know, my wife, Stephanie. Yes. So she came back with this thinking it was the latest book because uh, you changed the cover. Well, they, they changed the cover. They put a new edition out. So that's the new cover. Yeah. Did they? Okay. Okay. So no relation. I read the previous one that you have. And uh, really what I was trying to get was pulls apart for my wife for, um, for Mother's Day. I love the characters. Like, I don't know how you come up with them, but um when I read every one of your books, if you guys haven't had a chance to read Terry's uh, books, get them. I mean, every single one of them, I am so invested in every single character. Oh. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. 
Thank you, Gordon. Terry, and you do as my question. marketing representative, Gordon. Thank you. That's there you very go. kind of you. <laughs> Terry, yeah. one question that comes up with podcasters a lot is what topics do I pick? And so kind of with you writing these books, like, and I know maybe topics is the wrong word, but how do you come up with like the overriding theme or the direction of the book, uh, you know, or like Gordon had talked about the characters, like that creative process. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. And it's a, it's a bit of a mystery to me how it happens, but I'm usually writing about something that I, that I care about in some way. Uh, I'm usually plumbing the depths of my own experiences and picking topics that I know a fair bit about before I even start. I don't have a lot of time to do a ton of research and I want the writing to come across as being really authentic. So I need to write about something that I know about and can speak about with some conviction and authority. Uh, so my first two novels are political satires about uh, the state of politics in this country, which is, uh, and I'm not very happy with the state of politics in this country. Uh, so rather than writing a rage-filled non-fiction polemic that nobody would have published or read, I decided to cloak my ideas in a funny story and put my thoughts in the minds and the mouths of some characters you might come to like and kind of get my ideas across by stealth. Uh, rather yeah, than very sneaky, yes. very sneaky. Yes. So, uh, so I do that. My, my current novel pulls apart. Uh, the latest one that came out in October is my feminist comic novel. It's a, it's a comic novel about uh, women's inequality, uh, which is an issue mm -hmm. I've been really concerned about uh, since my feminist awakening. And when I was actively involved in the student movement in the early 1980s. Uh, so again, if I'd written, uh, you know, some, angry pro-feminist uh, treatise, nobody would have would have published that. So I, I've written a funny story mm -hmm. that allows us a different entry point for us to think about gender inequality and what we ought to be doing as a, as a society to, uh, mm -hmm. to swing the pendulum so that we actually have equality of the sexes. Uh, so it's a very pro-feminist uh, novel. Uh, so I, I tend to write about things where there is some kind of a mission. Sometimes you can read the novel and not notice the mission. I'm okay with that. It's just a fun story. It's a distraction. It's an entertainment. Great. That's fine. But I think I'd be more fulfilled if people gave passing thought to the more serious issues that underlie the fun. And you're right. You know, sometimes that's what happens. I remember watching a movie and I just watched it and enjoyed it. And, if there was a message, I didn't know what it was. And then I read a review and the reviewer got the message. And that's all he talked about in the review. And I thought, oh, did I ever miss this movie? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go watch it again now because my eyes have been open. There was a lot more of a message in here than I had thought. Right, exactly. <laughs> that happens, right? It does. It does. And you don't want to be on your soapbox through the whole novel. And I, I try not to be. Occasionally, I will dip into proselytizing. But uh, it, I still want it to be a, a story. And I want the characters to be believable and three-dimensional. And, and I want the audience to be rooting, the readers to be rooting for some of them. And, and you know, angry at some others, the villains and all of that. But, uh, but there, is a, there is a message, I hope, that comes across. Mm -hmm. So I think from the ter in terms of podcasters, you you have some really important gems here. And I just want to make sure that nobody missed them because we have couched all of this in terms of fiction stories. And the first thing I want to highlight that you said that I think is really cool and really important was being authentic. So, you, you know, you said I'm, I pick topics that I'm very familiar with and you you said something that would suggest some laziness, but I don't think it really was, which was, I don't want to do a lot of research. And so most podcasters are the same way. Like we do a podcast on a topic because it's a topic that we love. Usually we know something about, I mean, there are people that say, I don't know what I'm going to do my podcast on. So I'll figure out something that I think I can make some money on. And those ones don't usually last very long. The people that right say, on. you know what, I'm really passionate about this topic. I'm going to be talking about this topic and themes around this topic then it becomes really easy because what I tell a lot of my co-hosts is what happened last week? What do you mean? Well, you talk about X, what happened last week that illustrates what you talk about in terms of X. 
and they go, oh, well, I talked to this guy about that. I had an interesting conversation. About, and that's what we talked about on the podcast. But by right. being authentic, you really have an opportunity to connect with your audience on a deep level. And I don't know about you, but I have been to live events where some guy got up on stage and started talking. And I thought, this guy is the most insincere person I have ever seen in my life. And I am tuned out. In fact, if I see he's going to be on stage somewhere, I'm heading in the opposite direction. And that, I think, is 10 times or 100 times more uh, what happens with podcasting. If, if someone's listening to you and they can tell you don't care about what you're talking about, you're yeah. not being authentic, you're not being sincere, they're gone because we're really talking about connection, creating a connection. And it sounds to me, Terry, like you've done something that a lot of podcasters don't do. And they said, I'm going to create a connection with my audience using humor. We don't have yeah. as much humor in our uh, podcasting world you know, I, as far as I can tell, right? I don't see it. I know I don't do it as much. Mm -hmm. And I need to be thinking of funny <laughs> stories and presenting them a little bit more as illustrations of the main point that I want to make. Yes. Sometimes we're just way right. too serious, right? So it's like, loosen up, show some humor. That was number two. Number one was be authentic. And number three was talk about stuff that you know. And, it, and it's interesting because I do a lot of online courses. And I was doing an online course with a lady who I think is in Texas. And it was a brutal experience because she was almost trying to read what she had written about the topics for that we were talking about, right? right? And I could not figure out why this was such a struggle for her until right. about three or four hours into the process, three weeks into the process, she said, you know, the stuff later on in the course is what I do all the time. This stuff that I'm doing laying the foundation, I never talk about it. And I go, oh, this is why you're struggling. Like this is, we should, probably shouldn't even be talking about this stuff, but she feels like she needs to do set this foundation for some reason. Right. And so she's gotten out of her sweet zone. Like I knew she wasn't in it. Right. Cause when you just sit and talk to her, you can tell that she's a good communicator. So I just could not figure it out, but knowing what it is, loving the topic, that's, that is really the key to, coming yeah. across authentic and connecting with your audience. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, and if I go back to my, my podcasting days with, with Inside PR, where I had a co-host, the other touchstone for us for podcasting was conversation uh, and unscripted mm -hmm. conversation at that. We knew what our topics were going to be before we started each, each show, uh, mm. And we knew maybe some points we wanted to make, but it was not scripted in any way. It's not, this isn't radio mm. we're doing. This is podcasting. should be uh, authentic. So Terry, are, you, are you telling us that we need to throw out the script now? <laughs> I've got it like right here. And I've got, you just went uh -huh. off script, dude. I don't know. What, what are we going to talk about now? <laughs> exactly. <I'm stuck. laughs> yes, I am saying that, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I suspect you've never used a script in a podcast in, in your life because uh, You're right. you get what podcasting is, I think. That's clear. Uh, and you, you want yes. it to be natural, authentic voices talking to one another. And I much prefer podcasts where there is conversation as opposed to one person who simply you know, pontificates for 20 minutes. They can be good, but mm -hmm. conversation is it, one of those, you know, cornerstones of social media that uh, we need to be respecting. But Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And, and I, we're kindred spirits, Terry, when, that, when it comes to that. Like when I'm doing a podcast, I have the main topic that I want to talk about, two or three points that I want to cover, and then I'll have a conversation with somebody, <laughs> right? Which means stopping and listening to what the other person has to say. Right. And, and people love that. I mean, if you go to Starbucks and you're sitting all by yourself, it's hard not to, uh, what is they? what's Gordon saying there to Terry? Oh, that's interesting. You know, what's this person say? You know, we listen to the conversations, right? Right. And the energy is yeah. so easy to keep up because it's not in a monologue. You've got to do yeah. all the heavy lifting yourself. Right. Whereas I had a really, excellent co-host on my weight loss podcast and he was mm. so in tune to energy and he would say you know what i noticed my energy is dropping to himself he'd be saying this right. and he would just pick it up or he'd say scott you've talked for a couple minutes and your your energy is going like this he would jump in and rev it up right and right. after he would yeah. tell me what he was doing you know then i started recognizing it myself 
and I think yeah. it's an important. So Scott, I mean, yeah, absolutely. E- energy is everything, right? So we did a podcast this morning, the Empowerment Radio Show with mm-hmm. Nadia Melton, who's on a cruise in Miami right now. Can you imagine? Nice. <laughs> it was just an incredible podcast, and you know, with technology, she actually had Periscope on her simultaneously while she was doing this podcast. Right. Scott, um, well, I know we still got Terry here. Just to answer maybe one quick question from you, Scott, while um, somebody just asked about success, you know, Terry says successes with podcasting. You mentioned weight loss and mindset, the podcast you had. How many subscribers did you have in, in the first year? Would you mind if I ask? Uh, 375,000. Wow. It's, it's, wow. And, and downloads and how many downloads? About three quarters of a million. It's crazy. I know you don't like talking about that. I don't mind. So, you ask me about it all the time. I, right? So I have, you're, you're too humble about it. Terry, you being in the PR business and social media, um, I mean, could you share with us if somebody was a small business owner or somebody in the business world who can have that many eyeballs listening to their podcast or on iTunes, what would that do for their business? Would you say from the PR perspective? Yeah, I think that that's an extraordinary number. I mean, in podcasting, what you often hear is that the numbers are very small because we're, we're not broadcasting, we're narrow casting or niche mm-hmm. casting. And we have small but passionate audiences and we look for quality of audience rather than quantity. But when you have a topic that's as universal as weight loss, you can get those kinds of numbers. And that's that's an astonishing uh, subscriber base, 375,000. That's a that's there are 350,000. That's amazing. Uh, and that's and of course, what does it cost you to do that, Scott? Not not very much. Uh, no. In fact, if you listen to them now, uh, you'd be shocked at how bad the production was. <laughs> I've listened to a few of them. I go, oh, no. I know we all cringe at our early episodes. I happened to listen. We just, it was 10 years ago last month that we started the Inside PR podcast. And when we hit the 10 year anniversary, mm-hmm. and Gordon, you know, it was David Jones who did it with me. Yeah, oh, David really? David Jones and I, okay. he plays ball hockey with us as well. I didn't know that. And yeah. uh, I went okay. back to listen to the first episode, and it, yeah, I cringed a few times, but we all do. <laughs> but uh, yes. but that's, wow. the, the community is so forgiving. And when you're starting out, that, uh, you know, you need to make your, your, your mistakes and you learn from them, but that's a huge audience. And what an amazing, what amazing access you have to potential customers or uh, supporters. Uh, and that's the, that's the, the power of podcasting, I think. Yes, I totally agree. Are there other authors that are following your uh, plan? <laughs> Funny you should say that. Uh, when I when I po- podcast my first novel, I didn't know this then, but nobody had done it in Canada before. Um, I got the idea from Scott Sigler, who is a, a podcast pioneer in New York City, who podcast his novel. He's a, a thriller horror writer. And he landed a, a, a publishing deal pretty quickly because he had so many podcast listeners. And I read this piece in the New York Times and I said, well, I, I can I know how to podcast. Uh, so I, I did that. And I don't know that there are very many. There are lots of books available on iTunes now. Uh, I don't know how many are being produced by the, the authors themselves and doing all the production work and adding music. And and Gordon may know that Roger Day does my little voiceover at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Another guy we play ball hockey with. Everything goes back to ball hockey here. Um, I can see hey, Roger's to take it out. Yeah, exactly. Roger's actually doing... Raj is actually doing voiceovers for a lot of our um, podcasts. Good, he, as he should. He's uh, he's got a terrific yeah, voice for yeah, that, and I've yeah. used him for every single one of mine and for our, our PR podcast. So, uh, so I, yeah. I think it's uh, it's 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 very powerful. I think more authors should do it, but I think there is a reluctance on their part to uh, uh, to share their their work in its entirety. But you know, for poets or for or short story writers, it's I think it's really built for them, and they should be trying. It. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, because what is the written book except the writing down of the oral presentation of the story, right? right? Like, I mean, when I'm thinking of stories, I always think of a bunch of cavemen around a fire under the stars. You know, we had a hard day. We Mm. got the saber tooth tiger off our back. We got (laughs) food for the family. Now we're sitting back relaxing and we tell the story of the moon or the stars or the sea or these fish. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, The oral tradition uh, is very powerful. And that's how I look at podcasting as very much going back to those oral traditions, except that now the campfire 
goes all around the world. Right. And we're able to share it with people wow. everywhere. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I just posted um, I just posted a link on uh, on the chat, and I guess one of the benefits that Scott taught me when you have your own podcast is you can control your own content. You can do whatever you want, right? <laughs> so when you're talking about here, um, when you're talking about book publishing and podcasting, the reason why I posted that is um, you know you inspired me in terms of book writing. And about a year ago, my business partner and I, Randy Goodman, we took a compilation of 15, 16 real stories from women. Uh, and we came up with a book called The Empowering Women to Succeed. And just incredible stories. Like it, it's a book where if you don't have a box of Kleenex, at least for me, uh, you can't finish this book. I mean, the stories are so incredible. Like people that have dealt with, you know, divorce and cancer and some of the, so you know, it's just some, some incredible um, journeys that some of these folks have been through. But last year we took that book and it became the num a number one international wow. bestseller on Amazon. And so Good. tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, we're doing something I believe it's never been done before as well. We're going to do a pre-launch for our second book. Uh, so first book was called Tough Times Don't Last, But Tough Women Do. And the second book is going to be called From Burnout <laughs> to Victory. So, uh, you know, how many of our listeners can relate to being maybe at some point right. rise where we were burned out? Maybe how we, you know, came through that. So tomorrow, uh, because of you, Scott, we're doing a blab, like a live mm, blab for two hours. Good. We're going to have folks from all around the world on there. So oh, that's they're joining us tomorrow. Great. You're going to hear like 16 to 30 authors from Costa Rica to all over the place sharing uh, their stories. And the Kindle version of that book will be available for oh, 99 Good for you. That's today. awesome. Uh, I, thought, I thought, Gordon, that you were going to say that tomorrow, thanks to Terry's inspiration, <laughs> you were going to get every one of those <laughs> authors to read their chapter. And then you were going to start up your own uh, empowerment women podcast, podcast like a separate one for the book and every day actually actually we're doing are that, you Scott. doing that well we didn't go through uh, they're actually recording it right now like they're actually recording each individual chapters and, and the chapters will be made available good. on podcast okay good yeah. that should be part of your pre-launch yeah. now yes Great. yes it's a lot of a yep. lot of link juice <laughs> absolutely good. Absolutely. Terry, we want to thank you for joining sure. us. And I would like to ask if you can, if you can hang around for a few more minutes, because what I'd like is I'd like for Gordon to quickly go through. The, there are about four or five questions I think that people have asked. Ask us the questions. I'd love to get your opinion on it and, uh, and make sure that we've covered those questions. Sure. I'll hang around for a couple more minutes. I'm with you. Okay. Um, you know, one of the questions here is, is this is about podcasting or writing. Well, it's about podcasting. My podcast world is something that Scott and I are very passionate about in terms of helping anybody with a business. I mean, you don't have to be an author, right? You can have a brick and mortar business if you want, right? Uh, what a powerful way to tell your story or your company story, uh, branding, credibility, inst you know, instantaneously, you're going to get credibility. Right. It generates more leads for you online. And the reason why I wanted Terry to be on here today is, yes, he is a writer. But I also knew Terry, you know, broke the mold. He actually went and started podcasting each chapter to a point where eventually somebody uh, came along and, and, and picked up, um, you know, a, a publishing house actually came and picked up your, your book. So think of how many people have probably given up in trying to get their book published, whether it's self-published or a publisher. So podcasting is something that can really help you. In fact, Empowerment Radio Show is something that was inspired by you, Scott. Oh, thank you. you know, Randy Goodman, who's written the first two books now, we have 118 episodes now that we've interviewed. And what we're going to do is take 20 to 30 of these stories from uh, women we have interviewed, and now we're going to get the stories transcribed, uh, edited, and it's going to become probably volume four, not three, because volume three is already in the works with volume four of the Empower Women to Succeed series. So your podcasting can become a very, very simple way for you to actually write and publish a book right. as well. A lot of the principles uh, that Terry talked about in the last 45 minutes are applicable to every podcaster, regardless of topic area. Like, that, you know, just forget about book publishers. What about clients or, or I mean, it, there's just so much that I think is apply, applicable to everybody. Uh, this is our musical interlude. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey. 
I'm good. I'm just on the um, the live blob. I don't think I can. Can I mute him? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So there was oh, another the question too the about uh, pod, podcast platforms. We muted you, uh, Gordon. I don't know if you're if you're back. Sorry, guys. Back Sorry, I, had to, I am back. Yes. Um, and two of the top ones, in my opinion, are my podcastworld.com. I'm a bit prejudiced because I started that in 2009 when I was really upset with the podcast host that I was using. Um, $99 a year, and that's uh, if until you until you blow out our Amazon account, that's uh, going to work out. It's not going to go up. And the other one that's really good is Lipson. Lipson's been around since 2004 or five. They've got 15,000 podcasters uh, that they host. They're one of the largest uh, people that do that. And, you know, they're $5 a month, and, but you, you know, <laughs> then, they're, then they're $80 a month. And then it just goes up and up and up depending on how much you use. I use and how much Libsyn is my host, uh, Scott. I've used Libsyn for all my novels. Uh, so I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Yeah, no, very, yeah. very good. Rob Walsh, uh, the marketing director, is excellent. So that's the answer to that one. The other question that I saw that I want to make sure that we addressed was how often and how consistent should you do your podcasting? And for that, I go back to uh, TV. You know, th there's a show on every Thursday night that I like. And so I show up at 7 o'clock and I watch that show. Then, actually this happened, they moved to Sunday. And I'm like, where are they? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't see any ads or anything telling me that they were moving from Thursday to Sunday. Mm. And so I missed a few weeks. I thought they were, you know, on hiatus or something. So, uh, so it's a really good idea to pick a one time, be consistent, do it weekly. We're used mm. to weekly shows. The beauty, both in Lipson and my podcast world, is you can schedule your podcast. So you could take one day and you could do four episodes. And then you just schedule wow. them Monday at 9 a.m., Monday at 9 a.m., Monday at 9 a.m., Monday at 9 a.m., and you don't have to worry. Right. And then sometime in the month, you do it four more times or five times if it's, that's, you know, it's a long month. And, um, and it's easily done. Yeah, I, think I know a fellow who does daily – I'll just finish off with this. There's a fellow I know who did, did – doesn't anymore – daily podcasts. And he just took Tuesday, and all he did was record podcasts for the week on Tuesday and then the following Monday they would start going live and it was a lot of work, but by organizing it, he was able to, to do it for a couple of years without many thought this is too much. Yeah. But. Well, I think you're absolutely right about consistency. Uh, and uh, we would always record at the same time. It would always, people put, come to expect it to be posted on Monday mornings. I think it was for us. Maybe it was Tuesdays. I forget now. And uh, I know when I get up on a, on a Sunday morning, I know that the New York Times book review podcast is going to be waiting for me in my iPod. And there, there's a certain security and comfort in knowing that that is wow. happening. Uh, and yeah. we also pledged when we started our show back in 2006 that we would keep going. You have to, you have to just keep doing it because this, this uh, sickness of, we call it pod fading, you do an episode a week for the yeah. first three weeks, then you skip a week, you do another one, and then you skip two weeks and do another one, then you skip three weeks, and eventually you just peter out. And that's not how you build an audience. You need to have respect for your audience. Uh, so if you're don't start it unless you're ready to commit to it uh, and do it, uh, because you really do need to, to stay with it, or there's no point in having that audience with you at all if they're, they're, they'll just fall away if you don't uh, stay with it. Mm. That's right. Yeah, Scott, you mentioned um, Lipson and I, and, and you as well, Terry. I know there's uh, some really good established uh, platforms out there. Uh, one of the reasons why I fell in love with my podcast world is, you know, my business partner was uh, paying five dollars a month to start, and then ten dollars. And I, I don't pay attention to little things like that. And the next thing I realized was she was at eighty dollars a month uh, for her right. hosting. And so when I found out that my podcast were at a package where it's like 99 bucks for right. the entire year. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's about a thousand dollars in savings. Terry, that's exactly. a lot of hockey sticks. I don't know well, it is. Well, it's funny you should say that. I, uh, cool. now that I have five, po I didn't really think about the monthly hosting fees when I started because I didn't believe I would ever have five novels that have been podcast 
and I'm just I'm halfway through writing my sixth. It will be a podcast. And uh, of course, when I'm uploading them once a week, they're half hour long chapters. So I can't even do the five dollars or seven dollars a month. It's it's fifteen dollars a month while I'm in upload mode. And only after it's fully uploaded can I dial it back to seven. So uh, there is a cost to it. But I do like Libsyn's. I mean, they are solid uh, and they get the job yeah. done. It's a pretty easy yeah. back end platform to use. Uh, and I've never had any real, uh, real problems with it. And the stats are nice. Uh, so, but I know it, there is a cost, but really it's only seven bucks a month or something per podcast. So uh, the trick is just to have one podcast, maybe not, not five like I have. <laughs> right. Awesome. Gordon, are there any Good. other questions that we might've missed in the, in the chat box? Um, length, length of podcast. Somebody was asking mm. Scott or Terry. Great. Jackson, well, I would say probably in Terry's case, it's however long it takes him to uh, read his chapter. Uh, I tend to tell people 20 minutes. And the reason that I tell people 20 minutes is I read somewhere that the average commute is 20 minutes. And somebody said, my average commute is an hour and a half, Scott. So, uh, <laughs> but then I looked at Ted you know, and TEDx and, and they're 18 minutes. They tell their speakers, you have 18 minutes. Right. And sometimes they go over, but I thought, you know what? If TEDx says 18 minutes, I can say 20. And we're, I mean, it's, for whatever reason they picked 18, uh, that seems to be a good, uh, good length. Yeah, I think that's, I think you make a good point. Uh, I, when people ask me that question, I, I usually say, your podcast should be as long as you have good content for. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. the 30-minute podcast really should have been 15 minutes. Uh, but if yes. you've got really good content, the nice thing about uh, about podcasting is that it's, it's time shifted. So if I'm walking to work and it's a 12-minute walk and I'm listening to a half-hour podcast, I just stop when I get to the office. And then when I'm walking home again, I hit that play button and there I am right where I left off. We don't have to be tied to the actual schedule of the show. Uh, we can listen at our at our leisure. So I think, in a way, it's not so much the length to me. It's do you have good content and good conversation? Uh, mm -hmm. And people can sh tune in and tune out uh, and finish your podcast on a, at a second walk you're having. Uh, but you just want to have good content. It shouldn't be an artificial yeah. limit where it's got to be 20 minutes and you've only got 10 minutes of content. If you've got 10 minutes of content, make it 10 minutes. Yep. Uh, That's right. Yeah. You're the producer. You make the choice. We're going to uh, have uh, Randy join us now for a few minutes. And uh, Terry, do you have any tips for somebody who's just starting out on a podcast? Uh, I think I would... Uh, I would say ha have fun with it. Use your own voice. Don't uh, don't try and be somebody you are not in the podcast. Uh, authenticity is really important. So I think uh, making sure that you're speaking in your own voice, uh, but recognizing uh, that sound quality, I think, is important to getting people to stay with you. If the content is good, yeah. but the sound quality is terrible, uh, it's hard for people to stay with you. So you don't want to give them reasons to drift away mm -hmm. because there's a lot of content competing for their earbuds. Um, so I think good, you don't need a high, really expensive digital recorder to get good audio content. I know some people who podcast mm -hmm. on their iPhone. I'm not yeah, necessarily I was suggesting say, that. I was going to say you the can. same thing. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I did a video recording at uh, Pitt River, which is just uh, 10 kilometers down. I biked out there and I thought, this is beautiful. I just want to do a recording. And all I had was my iPhone and my iPhone earbuds. And a couple of my right. friends who mm. were high-end audiophiles said, what microphone did you use? That was really good sound. Yeah, exactly. And I was no. almost embarrassed to say. <laughs> right. Well, so I, really, I use the. Uh... as an excuse because if you've got a smartphone nowadays, the mics are a lot better than they were a few years ago. Oh, that's what you use. Oh, right. Nice. Yes. I use the. So, uh, I just want to jump in for this. This is the original Samsung Zoom. Wow. Zoom H4. And I, I plug uh, an, a condenser mic into the XLR jack here. And uh, 
the sound quality has been very, very good. If I have to go on the road to podcast, you can actually use the uh, the condenser mics. Uh, they work quite well, too. But I prefer the radio style mic that plugs in. But uh, it doesn't take a lot. But I think qu sound quality is something that you ought to at least give passing thought to if you're going to get into podcasting. Well, and if you're starting, you should be listening to your podcast because what you'll discover is you say, I like um, so. a lot, so or like. so a lot, or, <laughs> yes. you know. Yes, uh, quite right. You know, right? I mean, there's all these words, and they can be incredibly irritating to your audience. Right. If they say and I'd suggest when you, when you do, are doing your editing, uh, listen to it in headphones or in earbuds as opposed to through the speakers of your of your podcast you want to or of your computer you want to listen in the way that your listener is going to be hearing the podcast and most of them will be doing it through earbuds and it sounds different yeah. through earbuds and you hear things that you don't hear if you're just doing it through the speakers on your computer yes got it got it <clears throat> so again okay well this sounds like a good time to say hi randy thank you for joining us can you hear us? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me uh, now? No, I oh. can't hear you. Can you hear me? Hey, Randy. Oh, can hear you now. Okay, awesome. Yes. Can you hear me now? How yes, is everybody? <clears throat> Randy, welcome. Welcome, Randy. Thank you. Good, Randy. It's oh, Gordon. You went Why away I jump from in your for a sec? Speaking. So welcome. Thank you so much. We're actually just we're just talking about and bragging about you. But um, can you guys hear me now? <laughs> Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. We're getting a bit of latency, but uh, we were, I can hear you. We were just bragging about you, Randy. So for the folks who just come on, you know, Randy Goodman is actually the the founder of the Toronto Women's Expo, and she's also uh, a number one. Uh, international best-selling author, the Empowering Women to Succeed series. In fact, uh, we're talking about how tomorrow you're doing a live podcast or a blab yes. to do your to have your second book launch. Randy. So exciting because this is actually you guys are breaking me in because this is the very first time I've gone on a blab. So that's well, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Terry, who's beside you right here, is, that's his first blast. So Terry, Randy's in Toronto as well. And do you remember when you were in Florida a few months ago? And I rudely interrupted you uh, by calling you and you were on holiday somewhere, I think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was I remember Randy, that. It was Randy that I was trying to introduce you to because we wanted oh. to, at Young and Eglinton, um, have about 20, 30, 40 uh, authors, upcoming authors, and wanted you to come and, and share with them your success on how you started with blogging, podcasting, and, and the you know the five best sellers you have, you have now. Uh, right, I would have been happy to do that. We'll, we can start out when to do that. So Definitely. now you meet. Right? Last, there you go. Last, <laughs> I'll finish this. Um, Randy on to talk for a second. You know, last week Scott talked about on a blab. It's incredible. You just never know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's, yeah. it's kind of. Well, we'll have to get together sometime. Definitely. Yeah. So modern day, how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so type of people. So, Randy, why don't you, uh, Scott, how much time, not Scott, Terry, how much time do you have? I know you mentioned the other day you were limited on time. I want to respect uh, yes, that. Yes, I, I, my limit was 6.30, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown right through that. Okay. Um, That's so another thing another that happens when you get guests on. You know, they have so much fun, they won't leave. That's I'm right. to get you off I four get times, to Terry. Go away. Didn't take the hint. <laughs> so why don't we do this in, in respect for, for Terry's time. Do you have any final uh, comments that you want to make that you could share with uh, our audience if they're thinking of podcasting or they're already experienced podcasters? What can they do? Uh, to kind of, you know, can they have the kind of successes that you've had? Well, I think podcasting is a great new tool. When we started our show, our first show, Inside PR, back in 2006, we really rushed to start it because we thought that there would be 20 other PR podcasts in the next three weeks. And that didn't happen. <laughs> Ours was the only show that was around for a long, long time. So don't feel like you have to rush it, but, uh, and you can actually podcast, I think I call it podcasting behind the firewall. You can find your voice without going live with it, without um, publishing it uh, on Libsyn or whatever your host is. 
and give yourself a chance to find your voice, find your feet and uh, learn how to do it and learn how to edit. I use Audacity. I just always use Audacity, even though I'm on a Mac. Audacity now. is free. It's a it's free download uh, and mm. it works quite well. I mean, GarageBand is great if you're recording music, but uh, there's nothing wrong with Audacity as doing straight, uh, straight audio stuff. Uh, mm. And learn how to do it enjoy it uh be a perfectionist when you're starting out because uh, uh mm. it will pay dividends i think in the end uh it doesn't mean you should be editing out you know everything that doesn't sound quite right because we want it to be authentic too we want your real voice in there and you can stumble over your words mm. and keep going um but you know it should be your real voice be authentic and see if you can promote it a little bit. Use the other social platforms that you've got to push mm. the link out. And in turn, be supportive of other podcasts that you listen to. Uh, and that and that will come back to you. So uh, yeah. when you, if you listen to lots of other podcasts, give them some, some love. Uh, comment on their blogs, on their podcast episodes. Send them audio comments because they will be played if – depending on the podcast, they'll often play the audio comments. Uh, and that really fuels the conversation, which I think remains a central pillar to social media and ought to be respected. This should be about trying to encourage conversation. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, think about how you promote it, because it's not necessarily one of those cases where if you build it, they will come. You may need to do some work to get it out there. Uh, but uh, I just remember the generosity of other podcasters when I was starting out, and I hope that is still the case today. Uh, I feared that it might grow competitive once we sort of found our feet, but mm. it wasn't for us, and I hope it isn't, and that podcasters are as, are as generous with one another as they were with us when we were starting out. And they are. Good. I think they are. It's been a really good, good. community. Thank you for being so generous with your time, Terry. I look forward to chatting with you. Thanks, again. guys, Thank and uh, good luck, Randy and Gordon and Scott mm -hmm. and everyone else. Thanks so much for having me on, and I'll see you at the rink, Gordon. <laughs> hey, and Terry, when's your new book coming out? Your newest uh, book? When it's today? only half written, uh, it'll likely be out in the fall yeah. of 2018 is what we're thinking about. Yeah, oh, so 2018, not, okay. So, but no, no relations. That's oh, yes. available uh, now. Five of them are available now, and Pulls yeah. Apart is the new one. It came out in October, and it's available. Yes. And uh, so, thanks for the promotion. <laughs> All right, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Okay. That's right. We've only got a few minutes before we uh, finish up, but uh, there was one question I just wanted to talk a little bit about, which was tips on length of podcast. We actually talked yes. about that earlier in the blab, and I said around 20 minutes. Terry said, as long as you've got something interesting to say, you're the executive producer, and um, uh, yes, people get used to you talking for a certain length of time. They get used to you uh, going live or posting at a certain time. And you want to be as consistent as possible. So uh, my suggestion is aim for about 20 minutes. You have two or three minutes of hello and warming up and two or three minutes of goodbye. And so that gives you 15 minutes, which usually you can cover one topic in, uh, uh, fairly, in fairly good depth. I don't know that you want to go incredibly deep. It depends on your topic area. Awesome. Good. So, Randy, thank you for joining us. Um, can you maybe in 30 seconds or 60 seconds or less tell us a little bit about yourself and what well, you do I'm and why really you really into, passionate into about into helping people. Casting. So the more people yourself. that I can help, the better. And I know it's kind of a cliche. Everybody kind of says that. But we're actually taking action, you know, Gordon, with you as well in partnership. And creating the book series that we have was one piece of the puzzle so we can help people worldwide. But also podcasting was another incredible tool because you could reach so many thousands of people. It's unbelievable. As long as they resonate with what you're sharing, then, you know, mm. you're going to build this incredible audience of people who yep. want to learn mm. from what you're sharing. So it's <clears throat> to me, it was a no brainer to get into podcasting and then connecting with Scott was fantastic because you know here's the guru <laughs> you know 
So we're learning like unbelievable things uh, from Scott. So it's, you know, it's such a pleasure to work with him. Yeah. Scott, oh. do you have any, give, do you have any, while Randy's talking, do you have any free giveaways again this week? People want to learn how to podcast? Well, I, I'm, what I'm doing differently today than I did ever before was I'm on my iPad and oh, I'm outside. Okay, so, you, okay. so I, but if you want to hang around, I will go and I will put a link to my uh, how to podcast course uh, for, and you can get it for free. It's regularly $20 and awesome. uh, it'll show you, it'll step you through how to use my podcast world and how to use Lipson depending on which platform you decide you want to use. Um, and uh, yeah, so it'll be there for you. Awesome. Sorry, and I didn't mean to cut you off there, Randy. Um, you know, podcasting. I know you've been you've been talking to Scott about podcasting. You've been podcasting. How many episodes are you up to now? I think I posted my hundred and sixteenth today. How many episodes do you have now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. Because I remember your first one, and it's day and night when I listen to it now. You know how. You know, Scott, you've always talked about don't worry about your first and your second and third. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to get better and better and better. And Randy, constant I know improvement. constant improvement. There were times when, you know, you would be strong post uh, putting up podcasts almost on a daily basis. Then you stop. Mm -hmm. Right. And we would have a chat about it and then you would go <laughs> strong and then you stop. It was almost like a diet. You know, the people that left the wagon. Off, and they quit and they stop. Fall off. Right? They fall off. What what helped you to be so consistent now? Like you're, you know you're what, you, you know, a podcast well, it's a always great basis. having, uh, you know, you're not only a business partner, you're a mentor as well. So, you know, having someone kind of kick you in the butt every now and then and say, you know, go and do it, go and do it. What are you doing? You're lacking, you're slagging, you know, you're falling behind. And, uh, you know, and you're always trying to get everything done in a day. But if, you know, just strategy wise, learning to plan when you record those podcasts and just like get them out of the way kind of thing. And then you can be posting one every day. Right. Um, but uh, you don't have to post them every day. You can post them once a week or once every couple of weeks or once a month, whatever it is that you choose to do. You don't have to do it every single day, but on a regular basis, you will be building uh, a great audience who starts to look for your podcast at a regular time, you know, whether it's every day, every other day, or every week, whatever you decide, they'll start to look for them. So you're almost disappointing people if you don't put them out at the times that you say. And I'm not perfect, let me tell you, you know, I'm not perfect. Gordon kicks me in the butt practically yeah. every day. But you know, I, I try to think about if you stop thinking about you and you think about how you're serving uh. others, then you make more of an effort to stay on top of it and try to get something out on a regular basis, whatever that schedule is that you decide. Nice. So, Randy, somebody asked earlier, um, and I'm, I'm going to ask this question, I'm going to let Scott wrap up in a minute. Um, so, somebody asked, do you do interviews? Like, what's the best format? Do you do interviews? Do you talk? Uh, what? How, how do you find it? Like, when you're when you're the host of um, the Empowerment Radio For Show, me, how do you handle your, I, your, uh, your talks? I do an interview style, but there are occasions where you'll record something for me and I'll put it out there or I'll record something. Something could happen in the day and you just want to talk about it. So you'll just record it. You know, I'll record it on my phone or somewhere else. And, yep. and you do the same thing and then I just put it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I've done it so many times. I've done it so many times where I'm inspired with the message. Maybe it's something about persistence, and I'll talk for maybe just two or three minutes on my iPhone, believe it or not. And I just send that audio file over to Randy. <laughs> she looks after it, and boom! Yeah, magically it shows up on iTunes. So it's amazing. I want to. I want to jump into the conversation on consistency and. Uh, if you want to be mm -hmm. consistent, the easiest way to do it is to have a co-host mm. because you and your co-host say, we're going to have it done by Monday, 9 a.m. or whatever time it is. And you, I will slough it off and procrastinate for as long as I can if it's just me. But if I know that Gordon and I have made an appointment to talk and record at 
Friday at two o'clock or whatever, I'll be there. Or if mm-hmm. I can't be there, I will reschedule it, and, you know, because things do happen. But I mean, I will consist, I will not miss it, right? And the second easiest way to do it mm-hmm. is to schedule out your guests a month at a time and say, you know what, I'd like you to be a guest on my show. When are good dates? And then you fill in those dates so that you know that you have enough content right. or enough interviews to last your weekly schedule. And then you do that. But I find for me that it is very, very hard to have a consistent, Mm -hmm. for me to be consistent. I'm not a particularly consistent person, okay? In fact, I can remember when I worked in the grocery stores, you know, my manager would just say, man, like, what a day you had yesterday. You were awesome. Today, not so much. (laughs) In fact, I even went to one of my managers when I was an assistant once, and I said, there's a person in this store. you got to kick their ass, boss. And he looks at me and says, who? Me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm, i don't know what it is i'm just like not doing anything today nothing's getting done i'm just dragging like you got to do something here i'm, I'm dying funny. so i i think though that we uh, many of us are if i have somebody who's depending on me even if it's just like showing up and talking yes. for 20 minutes i'm way more it's gonna happen but yeah. if it's just me and i say in my calendar it's two o'clock i'm going to record and I look out and I go, ah, I got to go for a walk. It's just too nice. Tomorrow's going to rain. And mm. then it never gets done. So I think if you work with somebody and have a partnership, you're way, you're, the quality is better and Absolutely. your consistency is way better. And that's my suggestion. Great suggestion. Yeah. Good. Scott, what's um, so right here in this bottom corner, learn to podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. You just posted. Yeah, that's my flagship. <laughs> 10 hours, sorry about that. 10 that hours, wow. On how to podcast, you get yeah. it free. If uh, you're watching this, it'll be in the descriptions. And it didn't start off at 10 hours, but I just add to it. It's been, it's, I launched it a year and a half ago, and every few months I add something to it as my own knowledge grows. Uh, it has how to use my podcast world, how to use Lipson. It has some marketing stuff in it because people ask me, well, how do you market your podcast? It even has some things on uh, voice coaching. So it has a step-by-step. So basically, if you wanted to take 20 minutes, you could have your podcast up and running on my podcast rule. Just follow the directions. If you don't know how to edit an MP3, I go through that using GarageBand. I even give you a template that you can just pop into GarageBand and use use yourself. Uh, But basically... It covers an awful lot of what you need to uh, to use to do your podcast, and it's twenty dollars. It's free for everybody on the Blab or who watches this or listens to it later. So they just need to click on this link. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Take you there. Good. Well, what I'm going to do is um, I'll just finish with a couple of final um, thoughts, and then maybe uh, Scott, you could wrap up here. Uh, sure. Again, I want to thank everyone who have uh, joined us today. Uh, my podcast world, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. We believe that we have a tool uh, that's very affordable that allows anybody uh, to start podcasting. If, so for $99 a year, um, you can start hosting your podcast, unlimited podcast on my podcast. And the beautiful thing, like what you heard earlier from one of our guests, uh, Terry Fowles. And you know this individual is so humble, so successful, runs one of the biggest PR agencies right here in Toronto. And now you've heard him earlier today. It's his his seventh book he's going to be putting out now uh, with a major publisher. He's won two amazing Stephen Leacock Awards for Humor. And he's got a third one that he was just nominated for. um, In fact, I was just reading it on CBC earlier today. So, And he shared with us, um, amazingly enough, he got turned down by all kinds of publishers. So he decided to podcast one chapter at a time. And I didn't realize, Scott, that he he mentioned that he had been podcasting since 2000 and was it five or six? 2007. I thought it was just podcasting of his uh, books, but he's been podcasting ever since then. So I want to thank everyone for for being on here this um, this. This blab has been recorded and it'll be made available to you. Thank you. So I w- again, um, Randy, thank you for joining us, and uh, I'm going to let you uh, wrap up our um, wrap up our blab, Scott. Awesome. Well, 
you did a pretty good job of it. Uh, we really think it's important that you podcast. It's an amazing tool. And there's 200,000, 200 million people that have wow. bought iPads and iPhones and iPods. So uh, you've got a direct connection. And Terry, he said something that just blew my mind, right? Because I know it, but I never say it enough. It's just, I really like that Sunday morning, I wake up and on my iPod is the latest New Yorker review, book review. And it's there. And it doesn't yes. have to do anything. So there's no spam filters. There's none of these things that cause us to not be able to communicate. And that's what happens is people will be saying, you know what? I just open up my iPod phone and there you are awesome. <laughs> Randy and I just listen to you and I don't have to do anything and how wonderful is that and yeah it is it really is but there's two things that have happened recently that have made me even more excited about the world of podcasting mm -hmm. and that is that all new cars now are podcast enabled so you don't have yes. to listen to the <laughs> boring uh, local uh, talk show guys who have commercials every uh, 10 seconds you can wow. just listen to your favorite podcaster whenever you want as you drive to and from whatever you're driving to and from. And the other thing is, is Google, bless their little hearts, finally discovered podcasting. They've made updates to their Android operating system so that now, and Google Play, so it now carries podcasts. So you can be getting podcasts easily. Like before, you had to download an app and you had to fiddle around. Now they're making it uh, very, very easy for podcasts to be uh, be caught up to so the last thing i want to leave you with is a little bit of news that just came out this week because uh, one of my promises is to keep you up to date apple and i think it's because of uh, the the airplay that's happening with cars mm. and because of google they have ignored podcasters for the longest time and mm. uh, they had a meeting with uh, seven or eight uh, very very popular podcasters to talk about issues that they had and they've talked, they didn't tell us, you know, if they made any decisions or not. But of course, the podcaster said, well, these were the things we told them we were unhappy about. And they were things that most podcasters are unhappy about. So I think Apple is starting to listen and they're going to, you know, hopefully wow. make some changes that deal with those, uh, those issues, which just makes podcasting easier for us, better stats, you know, that sort of thing. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, Scott, I, that, that's huge. I, I don't want to drag this on because I, I know we're wrap, wrapping up right now. Uh, for the folks who just joined us, this is recorded, so you can um, listen to the recording of this whole show. Uh, Scott, thank you so much. That's very generous. This course you have, Learn to Podcast Today, that's a 10 and a half hour course on how to podcast. So whether you're just starting out, you're just brand new at podcasting or you've been podcasting for a while, uh, for a while I highly recommend that you uh, click on that uh, normally it's twenty dollars. By being on the show here today, it's a gift, a free gift for you from from Scott. Um, you know, he's an individual who um, uh, I consider my mentor. I don't know anybody else who's got three hundred seventy-five thousand subscribers on on their show. If you do, let me know because I want to learn from them as well. That's Scott Patton, and I just want to make uh, one quick uh, announcement, if, if it's okay with you guys. Our special guest here, Randy Goodman, is the founder of the Toronto Women's Expo. And tomorrow morning, she's got a live blab. Tomorrow morning from 9 a.m. to um, 11 a.m. I would love to join you, but I have a dental um, surgery tomorrow morning, guys. So I won't Thank be on that you. blab, but I've already pre-purchased my book, Randy. That's your second book that you're launching, the Empowering Women to Succeed series. And your Kindle version is only 99 cents. So, folks, if you can be on that live blab, you'll get to hear all 15 the authors that are in that book, plus maybe the other 15 from the first book from Costa Rica, from all around the world, talk and tell about their story. And that's the power of, um, that's the power of podcasting, isn't it? Your ability to be able to just tell your story to everyone around the world. So thank you so much, everyone, uh, for joining us. And we're going to be back here again every Monday at 6 p.m. And every week we'll try to uh, bring something new to you uh, about podcasting ideas, strategies, and new inspirational stories like Terry and um, Randy with their successes in podcasting and how you can um, um, and how you can do the same. Yeah. And one day we look forward to you joining awesome. us and telling your, Bye -bye, telling us your success story as well. So thank you. Thank everyone for, you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good night. Bye-bye.